fan. Tell us about this fan that we just finished. This fan, we actually did a part one video of, um, which we will link in the description for, um, and it was basically a, this is Chris and Karen's van. Um, they came to us in a period of time where they were actually in their travels um, heading north and they were having a lot of troubles with their existing system. Uh, they weren't comfortable with it. They weren't uh, confident in it. So they, when they were chatting to us, they were saying there was a few issues in terms of, you know, things not necessarily working as they should. They couldn't trust their battery monitor. I didn't feel like they were getting enough recharge into the system. So when we were chatting to them about it, we got them to explain their setup. And as you'll see in the previous video, I was a little bit blown away as to how it could have been done in such a poor manner, um, particularly by, a, you know, a, a, in theory, a, a qualified installer. Um, Anyway, we won't go on any more about that. You can have a look at that video um, to work out what's what's happened and what's been done. Um, but this is the follow-up video showing what we've done to rectify this system and, and how um, the, the difference in the setup and the reasons why we do these things. So, first of all, their old, van, their old installation had three 120 amp hour batteries and two of them were mounted down on the chassis and one was under the bed. They had an inverter in the in the rear U-shaped lounge um, at the back, so huge distance between batteries and an inverter. Um, fortunately for them, the inverter is a high quality inverter, so it's a Victron MultiPlus, um, 3000 watt. So we, we were able to repurpose that. Um, they had, in the overhead cupboard, they had a solar regulator, which was taking in four solar panels on the roof. Two 170s of one type and two 170s of a different type. So they weren't split across the separate solar um, solar panels. They were th all coming down through one solar regulator. And it was only a 30 amp solar regulator. So... Not ideal. Not ideal. Not big enough. Um, the batteries that were installed were lithium. And they didn't have a DC DC charger installed. Um, they had a battery monitor in the overhead cupboard where the shunt for the battery monitor was mounted down under the rear seat. And as I say, the batteries were at the front of the van. So obviously again, not ideal. And so just for the people that aren't as technical as you with regard to the DC DC not having one, it means mm. they can't charge whilst driving. Or yeah, I mean, they would, they would get very limited charge through um, from the vehicle. And there's, I guess there's a few reasons for that. And we can probably do a whole other video on, on the reasons for that. But just in very brief explanation, um, to charge a battery, you need an, a higher voltage than um, the, the resting battery voltage. Um, and a vehicle outputs about between 13.5 and 14 volts um, from the charging alternator. A lithium battery sits at 13.3 volts when it's full or, you know, anywhere from 50% upwards. Um, the distance between the charging alternator at the front of the vehicle and this van um, is huge. It's, you know, it's a, I think it's a 23 foot caravan. Huge, yeah. So you're talking prospectively eight meters of cable, almost nine meters, including the drawbar of cable to the back of the van where the Anderson plug was connected. So you've got Anderson plug at the front and the connection for it at the back. And then you've got the cable then going back to the batteries, which ripped at the front of the van. So you've got another whole six meters. So you're talking prospectively 15 meters plus the vehicle mm, mm. of cable that's not quite to the right size anyway. Yeah. So taking all that into consideration, um, you know, the voltage drop is never going to allow for any charge to go through the battery. And they, and that was one of the things they were saying. They felt that they weren't getting any charge into their batteries when they were traveling. Yeah. Right. So, um, as I say, we can do a whole other technical explanation. I think explanation. we did touch on this yeah. in the previous video, actually. Yeah. So, we'll leave that in. Yeah. So, basically, anyway, 
you know, one of the one of the other issues was the the inverter at the back here, just you know, enclosed in a box, um, gets hot, all the things. So, not an ideal situation. So they never felt comfortable with their system. Um, moving on. So what we've done is we've removed the three one twenty amp hour batteries. Um, we can talk about in another video as well why we don't like paralleling batteries, but we've replaced those batteries with a 620 amp hour battery, a single 620. Um, we've taken off the original two times 170 watt solar panels that came with the van before the modification was done. Um, and we've replaced or installed in its place five 200 watt panels. So including the, the two 170s that are on the front of the van, plus the new five 1,000 watt, sorry, one, five 200 watt. They've got 1,000 watts plus 340 watts, giving them 1,340 watts of solar. Each different type of solar panel is taken down through its own solar regulator. We've also got a solar regulator for a portable panel, up to 20 amps of portable panel charge, so they can put another prospectively 300 to... 400 watts of solar into that if they need to. Um, we've installed a 50 amp DC DC charger. Uh, we've taken out um, the on off switch for the for the um, inverter from the overhead cupboard here. And we've replaced the whole monitoring package with um, the Victron servo and touch combination. So you've got a touch screen up in the overhead cupboard, which gives you the functionality to monitor your loads, monitor your solar, monitor your DC DC charger, monitor your inverter, turn your inverter on and off, you know, all the functionality of your Victron system, which is, um, you know, giving you histories and, and all that very comprehensive, very comprehensive yeah. system. So we've got all that in the overhead cupboard here. Now everything is also consolidated underneath the bed. Um, so inverter, battery, chargers, and everything are all within a very small footprint of each other. The cable distances are quite short. Um, so, you know, charging efficiencies are kept, uh, kept there. Plus we've got, um, solar isolation and fusing in accordance with the standard. We've got battery monitoring in accordance with the standard. We've got isolation of the battery in accordance with the standard, um, and obviously with the batteries that we currently are using, they are the Lifetech batteries and they are an enclosed battery with all the protections built into them and the ability to attach a, a vent hose, which can be taken outside the habitable space. So completely compliant to the standard. Right. So this system now, because of the way that it's been set up, uh, has sufficient <laughs> solar on the roof. Um, to recharge the battery plus use appliances throughout the day without necessarily depleting the battery as long as you've got good sun. So the appliances that we're talking about are the air conditioner and they can run that extensively now. Uh, they've got a coffee machine already on their bench top, which they obviously love. Um, so there's a microwave in here. Um, this is a three-way fridge, so they can run that on 240 if, if they want to from their inverter. They run Starlink. Um, they've got an electric hot water system, which they can use off the inverter as well, if they've got enough solar and battery available. Um, all the other types of um, kitchen appliances, so, you know, um, air fryers, thermomixers, and toasters and kettles and hair dryers, if that's what you think you would like to use as well. No problems whatsoever with the system. This is a, this is a large system, so as I say, 1340 watts of solar. Um, and a 620 amp hour battery. What size is the inverter? It's a 3000 watt inverter, but the multi pluses actually have a, a peak um, overload for a short period of time of nearly double. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're talking at quite a significant amount of, of capacity without the system shutting down. The battery can deliver that kind of load as well. So this is one of the key things with these systems that we make sure that we match the battery, the, battery, the inverter, the solar, yeah. all the charges, everything, nothing is ever overloaded. We're looking to, you know, be conservative with our, um, making sure our load isn't more than what the system can deliver, essentially. Yeah. So this is a caravan that is completely off-grid. Completely off-grid. Can stop wherever they like. Yeah. 
and can plug into any of the um, GPOs in the caravan, can use any of their 240 volt appliances, um, can run their air conditioner, and basically they can stay off grid for as long as the sun is shining, Correct. essentially. Yeah. yeah, and probably longer, mm. even when the sun isn't shining. The yeah. system's got a big enough battery that they can probably, you know, mm. handle a couple of days of, of cloud cover, no problems. Yeah. Um, even with the amount of solar that they got on the roof. Yeah. So yeah, it's um it, it is a significant system, that's for sure. All right, would you like to show us uh, the Victron screen? Sure. All right, so as we discussed, we used to have a battery monitor and an inverter controller here. Um, we've taken those out and replaced it with the Touch GX, uh, and we've installed that in the overhead cupboard. So as you can see here, you've got all the relevant information that you would want. Solar yield, when you're plugged into your vehicle getting a charging alternator working you can see how much charge is coming through your alternator with a new orion 50 uh inverter battery information ac load so you can see here we've got the inverter on it says inverting so we can actually um turn the system on and off through the screen so we have all that control in here notifications if there's any alerts which obviously at the moment there isn't and then the wake up screen which gives you a very brief overview of what's actually happening. So Alrighty. very comprehensive system, nice and pretty. And let's have a look at the system. Rightio. So as you can see, we've consolidated everything under the bed. Um, the diesel heater was actually installed by the client. So um, we've tried as best as possible to maintain a little bit of storage space under here for them. So. <laughs> They'll probably um, cordon this area off and, you know, store, I don't know, something in that little space there. But the rest of it, um, 620 amp hour, fully compliant battery. You can obviously see your inverter here. The 60 amp solar regulator takes in 1,000 watts. You've got the 340 watts here. You've got the portable panel here. Orion fusing, distribution, battery isolator, battery monitor, everything we need underneath. So from a compliance perspective, that ticks all the boxes. What we've done with this particular van as well is we've separated out um, the solar isolation. So the solar isolation is actually at the rear of the van, um, which just because that's the, the layout that we were looking for in terms of being able to um, separate out that plus it leaves a little bit more space under here under the bed we also put in a um, caravan to this van so as you can see here we've got a caravan um, so yeah basically that's that's the system as it stands so I guess from where they were to where they are now um, is a significant change to, first of all, their compliance, their safety, uh, their ability to monitor and, and function their system. Their solar recharges, you know, nearly double what they had previously, plus the ability to plug in lots of solar through portables as well. So it's a vastly different system. We are looking forward to hearing how this goes for them because you know, going from a system that didn't function very well to something that is going to function very well for them. Um, we're actually looking forward to hearing where they take this van. So with that, we'll leave it there. Looking forward to hearing from you on this one. So we'll speak to you next time. Cheers.